Hey little guys, it's your boy Amy, you already know, and right now we're going to continue our let's play of 999. Last time, um, let's see, who do, who do we have last time? We had our boy P. Cole, but uh, unfortunately the sound file was actually, it actually went corrupt from the recording. The moment I stopped the recording, it just said uh, audio file not found or was corrupt or some crap like that. And me and Pico were pissed. I mean, Pico was sad, but I was pissed. Because that was absolutely the best recording out of any person in the world. I'm talking about we had the funniest thing ever in existence. Like, I don't know, maybe God was like, oh no, you guys are too funny or something. Like, God was laughing so hard that he, he, like, he was like, no, I, I can't. If I laugh this hard, other, pe other human beings will die of laughter. So uh, he's like, nah, fuck that shit. <laughs> So last time we learned that uh, Snake was in a car accident from early childhood according to Clover and she's in the middle of telling the story so let's continue, it's already been a minute. I'm gonna try uh, to do voice acting but not for this part, I'm gonna have to drink some of uh, my punch so I'll let you guys read it. Good ass shit. Uh, Alright, I'm done. So, Snake's arm is not real. Prosthetic arm. Anyway, the accident hurt him real bad. To save him, they, they had to cut off his arm. Is that all you wanted to ask me? Talking about her brother, I clearly taken a great deal out of Clover. Junpei nodded. Look, uh, I'm sorry for making you talk about all that painful stuff. Clover only shook her head and walked off downstairs. Man, I'm a bit tired today. It's uh, it's quite late. It's uh, later than it usually is. I mean, oh crap! Right, I have to do all this over again. I don't even remember what, what was I doing. What was I up to? I was up to yeah, this. Okay, you guys know what happened, so I'm gonna skip most of this. Uh, go ahead, Clover, turn that off. Or is it this? Alright, yeah. Turn it on, I said! <laughs> oh shit. What? Uh, I think I. Oh shit. Fire! Can you do it this fire? Oh shit, we gotta get out of here. See you guys later. We're out. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know what happened. Don't worry. Okay, it's door number six that we gotta go through. Okay? So, you guys see me do this. Door number six. Oh man, I just feel so bad that all that stuff that we did with Pico. It, it, oh my god, it was great. It was. It, oh man. This is probably going to be the lamest episode in existence, but I have to do it because you guys got to see a scene that takes place here later on. So let's get to it. Uh, which one is it? Okay, this time I I am not going to. Uh, <clears throat> this time I I am not going to. Uh, what was it? I'm not going to fail this time. Pico knows what I'm talking about. I couldn't remember which one it was, B or C, and I, it looks like I've done it again. There we go, it is B. I always end up saying, okay, it's B, but then I say, no, it's C, you know, like, C. I don't know why, but, and then eventually I end up being like, hey, my god, man, like, come on, psychology, don't second guess your first answer, so, I mean, that's, that's the way it goes, right? And then I forgot to turn this wheel here, because I was having too much fun with Pico. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, we can skip this because we already seen this. Oh my god! Don't talk! <laughs> okay, 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 hold on, let's go back. Oh my god, I'm fucking stupid. Dude, this is the second time I've done this already. <laughs> oh, Pico's probably laughing his ass off right now. Okay. Uh, okay. La 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 la. Okay, so, okay. What the fuck? Where is it? Okay, okay, okay. Remember the part where June, like, uh, gets fever and whatnot, and then she comes over, uh, I mean, 
not not her. Uh, Santa comes over here and he's like, "Oh, she's probably just exhausted." And everyone's like, "Yeah, how'd you know?" It's like, "Well, we're, we're guinea pigs," and like, "How come we're not?" Blah blah blah. And they said, "Oh, so you're a normal?" Yeah, we just run around this room solving all all these puzzles like it's just business as usual. Wait, I'm gonna try to do that Christopher Walken like this guy was doing. How the hell could you call that normal? We're just guinea pigs. Santa snorted in disgust. A guinea pig? You mean like a lab rat? You mean we're being used for some sort of experiment? Is that what you're saying? Dunno, but it does seem like a possibility, you know? With that, he turned and walked away from the winch. Junpei and Ace followed him. You know, speaking of experiments... Santa suddenly stopped. There was this experiment some scientists did with rats. First, they took a square sea safe tank and filled it with enough water that the rats could drown. The tanks has two exits, A and B. Exit A is pitch black, so dark even a rat can't see anything. Exit B, however, is electrified, which means the rat can leave through it. And that's where we're at. I don't know if this impression is good or not, but it, I, I know it sucks. Pico's probably laughing so hard at this, because he knows I fail. So. <laughs> So what would a rat do? Oh, sorry. So what would a rat do if it was put in this situation? Oh man, I'm terrible at this. Well, I'm learning, Pico. You've taught me quite a bit. So, which exit would the rat choose? Oh shit, I keep forgetting. There was a moment of silence. No, what the fuck? I was saying it the wrong time. <laughs> there was a moment of silence after Santa posed the question, and then Ace responded. B, of course. The rat has no way of knowing that exit B is electrified. Exactly. The rat goes to exit B. Of course, like I said, it's electrified. Which means the rat can't get out of that way. Okay. So, after a lot of trial and error, the rat finally finds exit A. Hmm. I can't say that's very interesting or relevant. It's simply the story of a laboratory experiment. You're right. It is very interesting. Yet, yeah. these scientists repeated this experiment over and over, using hundreds of different rats over several generations. This produced some surprising results. Oh, I'm so terrible at this voice. With each generation of rats, they took less time to find the correct exit. Eventually, a rat was put in the tank, who instantly chose exit A without even attempting to go to exit B. But even that wasn't the most impressive thing. The same experiment was conducted in another laboratory far from the original one with the same results. No, on second thought, the results were really the same. The rats in this second experiment began the trials with significantly faster times than the first rats in the uh, initial experiment. These rats were not related to the rats used in the first experiment they had never even come in contact with them, and yet, they all easily found their way to exit A, as though they already knew. What did it mean? Are you suggesting something like telepathy? They were passing information to one another through some indetectable medium? Ace looked skeptical, Santa snorted at him. How the hell would I know? Not any kind of scientist. I don't know what made him do that, but I do know that the story's true, and if you got another explanation, I'd sure love to hear it. I don't think he does, man. Come on, let's get going. There's still a lot here we haven't checked out, and we gotta get the hell out of here before June passes out. Without waiting for a response, he turned around and started walking. Jupiter ever wasn't quite ready to leave the topic alone. Hey wait, there's something I want to ask you. Santa stopped and turned around. Why did they use that tank for the experiment? Huh? 
Well, I mean, it seems like you could conduct the same experiment without the water. They could have just used a dry box, you know? If they needed to motivate the rats to escape, they could have, I don't know, put some bait, exit B or something? It's because they're fucking killers. MURDERERS! Every single one of them. <laughs> I mean, do they have to make it so the rats can drown? Santa gave a grim bark of a laugh. You know, the word emergency comes from the same root as the word as... Ugh, same root as the word as emerge? Oh yeah, that, was, that is... Okay, emerge. You ever think about that? Oh, nah, I'm losing the voice. I'm losing the voice. Well, an emergency is something urgent. Often something dangerous. And I can't do this voice very well at all. And to emerge means to sort of come out or appear or rise out of something else. So what's going to emerge in an emergency? Inspiration. Please stop talking, Santa. I'm tired of doing his voice. Inspiration. Yeah. Think about it. When the chips are down, either you crack or your mind focuses and pulls up what you need. So in an emergency, your real potential emerges? Is that what you're getting at? Yeah. That's why the rats had to drown. They had to be in danger. There had to be an emergency for inspiration to emerge. Jesus Christ. Enough talking, man. Jupe suddenly felt cold. The back of his head was aching, and his stomach felt strange. Ooh. Okay, finally, we can beat this now. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Where is it, where is it, where is it? Dude! Okay, you're not pressing A. Like, you stupid moron. Okay, now we can skip half of these. And then get the call. Wait, not yet, not yet. Let's, uh, one step at a time. Okay. The call. Oh, sugar honey iced tea. Put the coal inside. Uh huh. I love this song. Okay, come on. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. The gears. They're spinning. Yes, we know. We know. We saw it. Yeah, this song is so fucking epic. Okay, now to solve the puzzle. It's terrific, I know. And you pay the fucking dunce. Like. Okay, uh, we should remember how it goes. Spin me right round, baby, right round. <laughs> okay. And we found it. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next episode. Um, yep.